Oh yeah. Oh yeah, good people. It is Friday morning. Welcome. The weekend is here. I'm going to be leaving here shortly to go back to the man cave. I know a lot of you are worried that, oh my God, he's going back to the man cave. The last two games, he's been at the red brick house and we won those two games. So I, I guess I'm setting myself up if the Cowboys lose. It's on me. But as we sit here, oh my goodness, it's the weekend, man. I can't believe it's week number nine in the NFL, and it has just been crazy, the ups and downs that we have here. You know, shout out to Ron Oliver, because that morning mix is the bomb. I just love this. And it is just about over. Here's what's crazy. I want to revisit something here because, you know, I remember just walking over to the Walmart next door there and remembering a guy saying that if we just got rid of that garbage ass quarterback, we would do something. And so I want to revisit something here because there was an idea of how we could save the Cowboys. And that was provided by the people at Get Up. Now, you know, Matthew Stafford. Would you like to have Matthew Stafford to the Cowboys? Would Matthew Stafford, a Super Bowl winning quarterback, be the solution to the Dallas Cowboys quarterback issues? Let's listen in this morning and go back in time just a, a few weeks ago, beginning of the season. And let's listen in. I'm going to channel my inner Brian Windhorst here. <laughs> it's got me thinking about a bunch of things that could just possibly happen. I already know. Uh -huh. It's got me thinking about what the Jets are doing. The mm -hmm. Jets have a young quarterback they drafted very high who has shown himself to be nowhere near ready to play. Mm -hmm. And they think they have a championship caliber roster. So what do they do? They go out and they get themselves an aging veteran who might be able to give them one or two years and a shot at a Super Bowl and maybe mentor the young kid towards being able to play. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what is Jerry Jones perhaps thinking? How about thinking about a Super Bowl winning veteran quarterback who might want to finish his career in his hometown of Dallas, Texas, and mentor a young player in a year or two to being ready to take over the reins? That young player could be Trey Lance. And I'm here to tell you right now, Orlovsky, your buddy Matthew Stafford, <laughs> I buddy. could easily see a world in which oh, a year from God. today, Dak Prescott is way better off being the quarterback of Tampa or Minnesota he might or be. Denver or someplace where they really want him. And your buddy Matthew Stafford is the starting quarterback of his hometown Dallas Cowboys. What do you think of that? Greeny, it's Stand August 30th. Yes. <laughs> yes. Talk to me. You're one of Fantastic. a kind, man. You are one of a kind. You are a, a, a I don't special, hear special I don't, I don't person. Uh, uh -huh. uh, his wife is talking about how he doesn't get along with <laughs> the other no, no, players. Don't even James. know what he's talking. His wife yeah, is on podcasts that, getting him out of L.A. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I think it's thing. August 30th. We, we got a long way to go till we get to that point. Long, right. long, long way to go till we get to that point. Yeah. Um, Matthew's a better player. We'll see how healthy mm -hmm. he is this year. To my knowledge, he feels really good and is throwing it really well. Uh, but it's August 30th. We got to see a long way to long way to go till we get to that point, Greeny. I understand. I don't mind you not wanting to be on record as suggesting that this is the <laughs> yeah. brilliant idea that it is. But once again, I am that rare genius that will not be fully appreciated mm -hmm. until long after my time. No. Kimberly Martin, what do you think? I love it. But what I love most is that Dan literally for once. Isn't saying much mm -hmm. for once. This is Wednesday, Dan. It, 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 Wednesday, Dan. Suddenly quiet. I like it. I like mm -hmm. this idea. No, Matthew Mr. Stafford and Clayton Kershaw grew up well. together in Highland Park, Texas. <laughs> it's like a 10-minute oh. drive from where the Cowboys practice. Ryan Fitzpatrick Sorry. went to Harvard. Yeah. Oh, womp womp. Yeah. I will say, of all your takes, I like this one a lot because it just makes logical sense. Mm. Um, because you, because we again, we go back to the Jerry of it all and mm -hmm. how they feel about Jack. And you just don't get it's like you know, oh like, god really long time. she is really the shit like, starter do look you do you love me do you <laughs> why am i still asking after all these years girl why am i still asking do you love me so, so you're to your saying, point harry so, so you're saying early. yeah Dak Prescott to the Rams. Somewhere. No, no, not to the Rams. No, no. That Dak Prescott. If, if this thing. Look, 
<laughs> to, to, to okay. what Dan is saying is this is what some of you guys want. Maybe the Cowboys wind up having a great year. Maybe Dak has his best year. I hope he does. I love Dak Prescott. I want him to play as well as I think he could, and I mm -hmm. want him to receive the money from the Cowboys mm -hmm. he deserves and the, re the respect from them that they've never seemed willing to show him. But I'm taking your scenario into account, mm -hmm. which is that things don't go any better than they have the last few years. They don't go deep oh. in the playoffs. And now all of a sudden, Dak Prescott winds up somewhere else next year because that $60 million clause in his contract doesn't work. You just said Trey Lance isn't going to be ready to be their quarterback next year. So he's sitting there watching Matthew Stafford <laughs> lead a championship <laughs> caliber team to a championship. Oh, what do you boy. Think of that? Bring the big D. Right? Right? <laughs> if he's healthy. I mean, come on. He's healthy. What are we talking about here? <laughs> Bring him the big D. It's the Aaron Rodgers move exactly. Bring him the big Pause. D. It's exactly what it is. Now, again, I, I am yeah. hopeful <laughs> that Prescott will play great. I hope he does. I hope Dak makes all of this moot, which he yeah. easily could by playing great. I'm living in a world where if, if we are still sitting at the end of this year with the same questions, or more importantly, they are with the same questions, I could see this as a magnificent scenario. Danny, go. Let's get to week one. Let's get to week one. Let, let, yes. Let's get to let, Let's get to week this one guy. and let's see what Dak Prescott does. Really shaking things up today. This really guy has I don't know what is. Takes. Dan I don't know has what the has. the craziest takes. No, no, no. I People think my takes are crazy, but I feel convicted. All right, we're going to leave it right there. So, you know, again, some of you guys out there, you want to move on from Dak Prescott. You just want anybody. Now, of course, Matthew Stafford is a much, be much better quarterback than the Dallas Cowboys have right now. Matthew Stafford, you know, is the fastest man or one of the fastest men to 50,000 yards. That that guy, if we only had that guy, we would be a Super Bowl team. And so I want to say... Would you think our record would be better right now this season if we had Matthew Stafford? Real question. Just a real question. Matthew Stafford's older. He does have the experience of the Super Bowl win. But see, the thing that people don't seem to understand is teams matter. The people you have around you, the defense that you have out there matters. Because we look at Matthew Stafford versus Dak Prescott this season, Three and five. Now, of course, you know, we're told that a franchise quarterback elevates the players around them to will them to win. But somehow the Cowboys are five and two. Matthew Stafford is, in, you know, generational talent, as, you know, Dan Orlowski would say as his buddy is. This year, with really good weapons, 59.7% completion percentage to Dak Prescott's 71. 71. Now, Matthew Stafford does have 2,070 yards to Dak Prescott's 1,637, but they both were averaging 7.4 yards per game, per pass. Touchdown passes, Matthew Stafford's got eight. Dak's got 10. Interceptions, Matthew Stafford has seven. Dak has five. Quarterback rating, 82 for Matthew Stafford, 97, 15.8 points higher than Matthew Stafford. So as we look at this, as we look at this, you're telling me that the Cowboys would be better off taking a $38 million cap hit, spending draft capital to trade for Matthew Stafford? And then pay basically $40 million a year for an aging quarterback. See, this is the thing that y'all don't seem to understand here. As everybody just thinks that all you got to do is just get another quarterback because they're just easy. You know, because, you know, we're sitting here looking last night at, uh, you know, Kenny Pickett. Or, you know, I'm sure the Steelers wanted him to be Ben Roethlisberger. You know, we're looking at... Uh, Bo Callahan, Callahan, you know, or last night for the Titans as a rookie, you know, throwing some nice deep passes along with a bunch of interceptions. Looking at guys like Mac Jones and Zach Wilson, you know, that are out there. And even, you know, players like Justin Herbert, who they say is generational, who this team is ass ass and lost to the Dallas Cowboys with Dak Prescott. There's only one Pat Mahomes out there. And believe it or not, he sometimes loses. It's hard in the NFL to find a quarterback. And we could look at somebody like Daniel Jones, who I'm amazed 
Could you imagine if Dak Prescott was injured three of the games in the season and ended up having two TDs and six interceptions and looking like ass ass? Well, that guy is getting the same amount of money that Dak Prescott is and ain't nobody blinking an eye. I say these things not necessarily to defend Dak, but to at least put the information out there so you don't look like a freaking idiot when you have takes that aren't actually true. ESPN, they are in the business of getting you to watch. It doesn't matter by hook or by crook which way they do. They will say outrageous things. The idea of trading Matthew Stafford, bringing in Matthew Stafford to teach Trey Lance and just get rid of Dak and take a major cap hit, it would cost you more money to do that, to get a guy who is second all time in pick sixes, who, mind you, threw one against the Cowboys with 30, leading only behind the most intercepted quarterback in the history of the NFL, Brett Favre, but he played 20 years. Matthew Stafford will probably pass that record. So at least get your facts straight, good people. And remember, ESPN is for entertainment purposes only. It's not factual. I'm Mark Holmes, and well, of course, it is Cowboys Eagles Hate Week. And um, we'll see you soon. Fuck them birds. Fly, Eagles, fly. Now we shoot those birds out of the sky. Stupid dumbasses managed to give up a third and 30 to my sexy arm. Pathetic defense and team. No wonder I own those piece of shit frauds every damn year. Don't get me started on the fans. You boo me while I earned a respected award. Losing the Super Bowl was just karma for you fuckheads. I can't wait to drop 100 on your heads next season while being the daddy of the NFC East again. <laughs>